Hi everyone. This is lecture 33 uh, on the female reproductive system. We recently covered the male reproductive system and we were able to finish that in one lecture. We're going to see that the female reproductive system is a little more complicated with many uh, overlying cycles and differences in timing than we saw in the male reproductive system. So let's begin. In this lecture, we'll begin, as we did before, discussing the basic anatomy of the female reproductive system. We'll describe the ovaries as glands that produce the ova and the female sex hormones. Okay. So in that aspect, it is not too different from the male reproductive system. Uh, we'll describe the physiological effects of estrogen and progesterone, and we'll look at the different uh, functions of the female reproductive system, the uterus, vagina. We'll look at the external genitalia, as well as the mammary glands. And then we'll continue in lecture 34 in the more complicated different cycles that we see in the female reproductive system. Okay, so the female reproductive system uh, has double duty because it has to also uh, support the developing embryo and nourish the infant. The female genitalia includes the ovaries, the uterine tubes or fallopian tubes, the uterus, and vagina as the major organs of the female reproductive system. Here in this figure, we have them indicated, uh, circled in this, uh, an illustration. Here. So here we have the ovaries, here we have the uterine tubes, uh, here is the uterus, and then the vagina. In the female reproductive system, most of the organs are in the pelvic cavity. Unlike the male, when we saw them, they were external to the body. So here, to give that uh, to that comparison, we see the pelvic girdle here and how the female reproductive system fits with inside it. It is well protected inside the pelvic bone. So here we have the ovaries, uh, the uterine tubes, uh, the uterus, uh, uh, and the urine bladder and the, vagi and the vagina uh, going to the exterior. So in this picture we can see why uh, pregnant women have the, the sensation to urinate a lot because the developing fetus is pushing right on the urinary bladder. Let's begin a little uh, overview of each of these organs. The ovaries of the female reproductive organs. Okay, they have two primary functions. <coughs> Who's ova or egg? and secrete hormones. So remember, they are also an endocrine organ. And they produce the major hormone are estrogens. Notice this is plural right here, plural here, because estrogens are a group of hormones that includes uh, uh, mo molecules such as estradiol, estrone, estriol. Okay. In addition to these, there's also progesterone, inhibin, and relaxin that are also produced by the ovaries. Whereas spermatogenesis was the production of sperm in the male reproductive system, oogenesis is the production of the female gametes. And unlike uh, uh, spermatogenesis, where the sperm are produced as free cells, the, uh, the gametes produced uh, in oogenesis are produced in follicles, They're protected inside a, 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 a cellular shell, as you might expect might say. Okay. <coughs> and this occurs in the ovarian cortex. Okay. Okay. So remember the ovarian cortex is the outer part of, of, of an organ. So the ovarian cortex is out here and this is where you're going to have the follicles. Okay. What about the ovarian medulla? The ovarian medulla has blood vessels, lymphatic vessels, and nerves. So they have all the supporting structures for uh, the developing a, a ova. Okay, but they actually ova are in the actually ovarian cortex. So here is showing the ovarian medulla. Medulla. Next, we have the uterine tubes, or also known as the fallopian tubes. And so, uh, past puberty, uh, uh, through the monthly cycle. Uh, one egg will be um, 
ovulated and enter the uterine tubes. Okay. There are different sections of the uterine tube. The isthmus connects the uterine tube to the uterus. Okay. And the, and the distal end expands into an ampulla, which connects to the infundibulum. Okay. And then we have the ciliated fimbria that cover the ovary at the end of the infundibulum. And at, during, during ovulation, the cilia will help beat in addition with muscular contractions to, to um, uh, guide the egg into the urine tubes. There's not a complete connection between the two. So here we see all the ovary, and like fingers, the, the, the fimbria extend over the ovary to encourage the, the egg that's ovulated to enter the, the uh, uterine tube. And so in the order that the ovo will see, they'll see the fimbria, and they'll see the ampulla, then they will see the, uh, sorry, they'll see the, the fimbria, the infundibulum, and then the ampulla, and find the isthmus before uh, reaching the uterus. Okay, let's try that one more time. So the fimbria, the infundibulum, the ampulla, and then the isthmus are the different uh, regions in order of the fallopian tubes before reaching the uterus. So as we mentioned, the fimbria sweep the ovarian surface to push the oocyte into the uterine tube. So both in a, in a combination of peristalsis, muscular contractions, you know, the same term we use in the digestive system, and the uterine cilia move the oocyte to the uterus. Now, fertilization will normally occur in the ampulla. Okay? Now, the uterus is also called the womb because this is where the developing uh, implantation of the fetus will, will occur. So, the uterus has many different functions. It is the pathway for sperm uh, to go for fertilization. Remember, they have to go then from there, they have to either make a left or right hand turn. Uh, to get to the ampulla to meet the egg. It will be the site of implantation of the ovum, and uh, if fertilization occurs, it will be the nutritional support for the fetus and provide contractions during birth. So the uterus plays many different functions. It's located in the pelvis anterior to the rectum and posterior to the urinary bladder. And it's small and it looks like an inverted pear. So we and so here are the three major portions of the uterus. The body is the main portion. Now there's a small area called the fundus, which is a rounded region superior to the entrance of the uterine tubes. Okay. There's an error in the picture of your uh, of your uh, textbook, at least in the figures, PowerPoint figures, at least. Okay. And cervix. The narrow region uh, that opens to the vagina inferiorly. So here is the picture from the textbook, and I don't know if I've updated the one on Blackboard, but they have the, the fundus labeled here, but the fundus should be this upper region above the opening to the fallopian tubes. Okay, and the rest of this is the body, and then the cervix is the narrowed region. Okay, so make sure you uh, correct this on your figures if you haven't, if I, if I haven't done so already on the blackboard. Now the uterus has different uh, layers. The outer layer is uh, is the perimetrium, it's the outermost serous layer. Okay. Then there's a thicker myometrium, as you might expect from the prefix, that is composed of uh, muscle, and it's a thick middle smooth muscle layer. And the inner layer is the endometrium, the innermost mucous membrane composed of simple columnar epithelium. So here are the three layers, the, the outer perimetrium, the middle myometrium, and the inner endometrium. Okay. Finally, we have the vagina, which is the female copulatory organ. So this complements the male penis during sexual intercourse and also serves as the birth canal. <coughs> so the vagina extends from the cervix to the exterior of the body. And as we will see, it, 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 it inferiorly parallels with the urethra and lies between the urinary bladder and the rectum. So right here is the vagina right here. It kind of parallels the urethra 
and it's in between the urethra and the rectum. So the female reproductive system, uh, at least in uh, primate, uh, uh, us and in rats, they, we have the separate openings for the urinary, reproductive, and digestive systems. Now this contrasts with the male, where the the uh, the urethra fun functions are both reproductive and urinary function. Okay. Now, the vagina, as you might expect, is going to be well protected with stratified squamous epithelium. And may, interestingly, there are no glands. Okay. But it's lubricated by cervical mucus from epithelial cells. Okay. So epithelial cells secrete mucus. And it also secretes glycogen that bacteria catabolize <coughs> to form ATP and lactic acid. Another structure of the hymen is the incomplete partition formed from the mucosa near the vaginal orifice. It's highly vascularized and might bleed when ruptured during the first sexual intercourse of a woman. Now the female external genitalia, also called the vulva, contains two structures. Okay. The outer larger folds are called the labia majora, and they're for protection. And then within them are two thinner skin folds called the labia minora. And they're enclosed uh, uh, with, uh, with an area called the vestibule. Okay, so here's the picture of the labia majora, the labia minora, and the vestibule. The vestibule contains uh, both the urethral and vaginal orifices. They contain parent urethral glands that circulate mucus into the urethra. Okay. Openings to, openings to the greater vestibular glands secrete mucus as the vaginal lubricant during intercourse. Okay, so here is, is the more detailed labeling of the vestibule and it came into the urethral orifice, the periurethral glands, the vaginal orifice, and openings to the greater vestibular glands. So the, many of these glands are more external compared to the male reproductive system. Another structure of the clitoris is a small structure corresponding to the corporal cavernosa of the penis. So this is the homologue of the two. And as you might expect, it also engorges the blood and is innervated by uh, many sensory motor and autonomic fibers. Okay. And so here's the location of the clitoris in the part of the vestibule. Um, the female perineum is roughly the same location as the male perineum. Here it is diamond shaped between the pubic arch, cossacks, and ischial tuberosities. So the, the major landmarks are similar. We also have what's called the clinical perineum, and it's between the vagina and the anus. And this is often the site of an incision called the episiostomy, which is usually um, cut during childbirth rather than having it ripped due to the, ch to the, to the childbirth. They, they usually make an incision so they can make uh, sutures later on rather than having it rip and be, have more damage. So here is showing the, the perineum. The mammary glands, if we recall from SCB-203, are modified sweat glands for milk production. Okay. I think early mammals, they help moisten the eggs rather than used for nutrition. They're located in the hypodermis of each breast, superficial to the pectoralis major. Okay. Each is center, uh, has a center pigmented area called the areola, and the areola surrounds the nipple when milk exits. And so uh, here are, 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 are left in the figure where I removed some of the more detailed description of it, in case you're more interested in, you know, for example, the breast is divided up into lobules. But, I felt this was extraneous, and so I took it out. And so here's a summary of the female reproductive structures. You know, nice handy dandy table of all the structures that we covered today. In the next lecture, we're going to talk more about the physiology, and which will be much more involved, and we'll see it's much more complicated than the male reproductive system. So this has been lecture 33. Okay. Thank you, and a good day.